Welcome, this is an introduction to the 5E lesson plan. The 5E lesson plan supports mostly scientific inquiry, but it can also be adapted to support a variety of content areas. Uh, it's effective for project-based learning as well as experiment-based learning. In the 5E model of instruction, there are several phases, and the phases are engaging the learner, allowing the learner to explore the topic on their own, teacher explaining the topic, having the students elaborate on the topic on their own, and some type of assessment or evaluation, oftentimes using a rubric or some type of submission. The 5E lesson plan is a constructivist learning model, and the focus is on the student developing their own understanding of the material. The teacher sets the criteria with specific objectives, and then each of the phases works towards that objective. The most important thing is that the students walk away with an understanding of not only the topic, but what the topic means for them. Now we're going to dig into the five E's and find out more. Welcome to the engage portion of the lesson plan. We've all been in the classroom and seen students with their heads on the desks thinking this is so boring why do i have to learn this why should i care the engage section of a 5e lesson plan is where you capture the student's interest i like to think of it as like a hook so to get their attention you're going to connect what they're getting ready to learn with things that they already know and like. Try to pick stuff that they would be interested in. The hope is that you're gonna organize their brain to start thinking about the learning outcomes even though you haven't yet introduced those learning outcomes. You're gonna engage them with the ideas that they're gonna be creating activities for. So if you're doing some type of problem-based learning, this might be where you introduce them to the defined roles that they're going to be uh, working with. It's important when you're doing the engage section that you think about what motivates students and you activate their imaginations to participate in the uh, investigation. You want to frame the major ideas, but this is very important. You don't want to draw any conclusions at this point. Everything should be very open ended because you don't want to give away too much. If a question comes up, then just say, hey, let's put a pen in that. We're going to learn more about that through this lesson. You want to keep it very short between five and 10 minutes. So a few ideas, and these don't have to necessarily be science ideas, although the 5E lesson plan was originally applied to science, it is useful in other uh, content areas as well. So if you're doing some type of experiment-based lesson, you might want to do a quick demonstration. Uh, if you might want to do some type of anticipation guide, uh, you could show them a short video or maybe show them an image and ask them uh, what they think about it. Um, ask them uh, to connect their ideas or experiences that they've had in the past with what's happening in that video or what's happening in that image. You might ask them to reflect and do a simple writing activity. Um, you might ask them to draw pictures about what they think if you're working with elementary age. Maybe you want to have the kids do something collaborative, like a little project or play a little game. I also do a lot of class polls. And it is important that you share the responses on the shared visual space if you're in a virtual environment. Uh, if you're in the classroom, of course, you'd write it on the whiteboard. But if you're virtual, you know, that, that is a little bit harder. And there are lots of educational technology tools that teachers can use to share information in a shared visual way. Sometimes it's as simple as a bell ringer if it's something that you're connecting to a recent recent knowledge you can just do a bell ringer activity as an engagement and like i said earlier if you're doing a problem-based scenario in your lesson plan you might want to introduce the components of the problem-based scenario or perhaps even just one component so i hope this hope this helps you get started in learning how to engage your students in the 5e lesson plan
We all love to take a walk in the garden. Smelling the yellow roses, smelling the pink roses, smelling the red roses. The explore part of a 5e lesson plan is a lot like taking a walk in the garden because the students have the option of stopping and looking, investigating, moving forward, moving in reverse, but they always stay on the guided path the teacher provides. In the explore section, students learn by doing. That may mean that the teacher refers them to a particular website or a particular resource, and they're going to investigate that resource on their own. Perhaps they will be given a list of questions to answer. Perhaps they will be asked to perform a task. Perhaps they will be asked to collect data. Perhaps they will be asked to work with other students to investigate some type of group work. The important thing in the explore section is that the students are guided to making new discoveries. The discoveries they make, of course, are going to connect to their background knowledge and to the prior knowledge of the subject. Um, they're going to be able to communicate some new vocabulary and you want to move them towards the more formal type of vocabulary. So if they have a reading assignment, you want to make sure that those new vocabulary words are highlighted in there. They want to use their own words to clarify and explain. At this point, you don't want to provide them with explanations. You want to let them unpack the problem for themselves to learn what knowledge they need to know. Previously, in the Explore section, your students were wandering around the rose garden, exploring, investigating, smelling whatever roses they wished. In this section, the explain section, you need to get all of your students facing the same direction. And that direction is a cemented understanding of the concepts. The students should be able to explain in their own words that they understand the essential questions. They need to be able to demonstrate any skills that they should have learned. And the teacher's role is to ask questions in order to help guide them to clarify the concept as needed. Again, you're going to link any past experience and the previous sections with whatever current learning you might be offering the student. So the idea here is to really standardize or cement the new knowledge and hook it back to the objectives. So you might be, as an instructor, providing information in a more direct or guided type of instruction, or you might be directing the student to resources that give them the knowledge that you need them to have. You're going to provide key definitions and context. Uh, you're going to let the student listen and build upon whatever discussion you have. And you're going to expect the students to clarify and justify now that they have some new uh, cemented knowledge. In the elaborate portion of a 5e lesson plan, students apply and expand the knowledge that they've gained in the previous phases. The artist here is creating something brand new, straight out of his brain. But notice he has all the tools of his trade. He's got his pens, he's got his colored pencils, he's got his special paper, he's even got some coffee to keep him going. Just like that, your students are going to take all the pieces of knowledge that they've gained and they're going to put it all together to create something new. The new product that they create will be an extension of the concepts and skills that they've learned previously. They might create a presentation, conduct some type of investigation or an experiment. They might gather data on a, on a slightly different topic, but they're going to develop a deeper and broader understanding of the concepts. The information that they've learned is pieced together to create some type of work product and independent task. They're going to apply the new terms and definitions in this new framework. Now they're going to use their knowledge and judgment to probe the data, to ask questions and pose them and make reasonable judgments. They do need to record data and provide conclusions, or if they're not doing an experiment, some type of solution to a problem. 
Evaluate is the last phase of the 5E lesson plan. This is where you get to give students gold stars, or maybe not so gold stars. In the evaluate phase, students get to show the degree of their understanding. And teachers will evaluate how far along they are to fully understanding the concepts. Different tasks might be submitted, writing summaries that show applied knowledge to some unique situation. It could be making a concept map or perhaps a quiz, taking a quiz. Teachers have the opportunity to observe students and make sure that they fully grasped the information. Here is a list of a few of the different assessment types that will be appropriate in the evaluate section. Some type of formal or informal written assessment, quiz, test, exam. Use of a project rubric or an expository writing rubric would be appropriate here. Grading a submitted work product such as an essay would be appropriate or grading submitted experimental results from a lab that they've uh, done. Also self assessments and peer assessments are very commonly found in the evaluate portion. And last but not least, exit tickets. Thanks for joining me for the 5E lesson plan video. I hope that this presents a framework for inquiry for your students to learn and grow and gives you the power to write effective lesson plans.